I kind of wanted to talk about today is the migration of birds and the migration patterns in general of birds. So you may be asking yourself what migration is. Migration is when animals move on a regular cycle to a, one destination to another destination. So they're basically moving. Migration is done in generally two seasons, in the fall and in the spring. So when migration happens in the fall, a group of animals, in this case birds, move further south for warmer temperatures where they can like raise their young and collect better food. And then in the spring, the reverse happens where they go from where it's warmer to where it's cooler so that they can regulate their temperatures and raise their young. And so you may be asking yourself, why do birds migrate? Why do they move from place to place? Why can't they just stay where they are? Well, birds migrate to move from areas where there are decreasing resources to areas where there's a higher amount of resources or increasing resources. The two primary resources that are sought out for birds would be food or nesting locations. Birds that migrate in the northern hemisphere where I happen to live um, tend to migrate northward in the spring to take advantage of increasing insect populations, plants that are growing, and abundance of different nesting locations because more flora or flowers and plants are growing so they can hide from predators. And then as winter approaches, the availability of insects and other food drops and goes way down. Um, escaping the cold becomes a really, really important thing to do to survive, but it's important and to note that not all birds migrate. Only some species of birds choose to migrate during different seasons. And so there's actually different types of migration, and I'm gonna describe the four different types of migration. One is permanent residence. So people who are permanent residents or birds that are permanent residents don't go anywhere at all. They're able to find food and resources year round, so they don't migrate. Another type of migration is short distance migration. Short distance migrants move from only a short distance, as I just said, from a higher to a lower elevation, like going from a higher part of a mountain to a lower part of a mountain. Medium distance migrants cover distances that span from one to several states. So they are migrating, and they are migrating a pretty large distance, a few hundred miles, but they aren't doing the kind of coverage or migration patterns as one of our long distance migrators. So one of the most commonly discussed migrants would be the long distance migrants, and long distance migrants typically move from breeding ranges in Canada and the United States to breeding grounds in Central and South America. So these are these tens of thousands of mile long journeys that I tend to talk about earlier on. Um, long distance migrates are a feature in some around 350 species of North American birds. And so the pattern of migration can vary within each category, but it's important to note that birds aren't the only species or types of animals that migrate. Insects and mammals and even types of fish also can practice migration. But flight migration of birds is one of the most commonly studied types of migrations. And birds migrate for really, really far distances. So if you can imagine how far a mile is or even two miles is, you can see that like birds that migrate can migrate up to 44,000 miles, sometimes up to 50,000 miles for a trip. And it's super important for their evolution because birds that make it and can survive the migration are able to lay their eggs and able to raise the next generation, and birds that do not aren't able to raise their birds or their fledglings to the next generation. Some species of birds, such as waterfowl or cranes, follow preferred pathways on their annual migrations. And these pathways are often related to important stopover locations that provide food and critical things for their survival on their way to their destination. Smaller birds tend to migrate in broad fronts across the landscape, and recent studies have from using data have shown that small birds take different routes in the spring and the fall uh, to take advantage of the seasonal patterns and the growth patterns of weather and food and insects that are available. So one common question is how do birds navigate? How do they do these migrations? So migrating birds can obviously cover thousands of miles in their annual travels, often traveling to the same spots year after year. And the secrets of their navigational skills aren't completely understood quite yet. Birds get their compass information from a variety of different factors, such as the sun, the stars, sensing the Earth's magnetic field, for instance. And they also get their information from the positioning and setting of the sun from landmarks seen during the day. So they combine all of this information in order to get a complex sort of map 
to figure out how to travel and avoid obstacles. They can't avoid all obstacles, which I'll talk about in a second, but they use these different cues to kind of create their own personal map to get to their migration destination. And so I mentioned traveling thousands and thousands and thousands of miles for migration, but you may ask, how do you know that? How do any of us know how many miles a bird travels? And the reason for that is that study, scientists study that. So scientists use several techniques in studying migration, including banding, where they put little bands, numbered or lettered bands on birds to study their tracking patterns, satellite tracking, relatively new methods involving lightweight devices such as geolocators that kind of show on a computer and on a map where the birds are going. And one of the goals is to locate the stopover and wintering location. So places they stop in between their long, long journeys. And once identified, we can use those steps to be taken to protect and save these key locations so that they don't get hurt on their long journeys throughout their migration. So if you've ever been on a road trip or like an extremely long journey, you can know that those long road trips aren't always the easiest thing, and the case is no different with our avian friends. Um, migration takes a lot out of a bird. It takes a physical and mental toll to travel and navigate yourself over thousands of miles over land and water in order to get to your destination. Taking a journey like that is obviously very stressful, and in recent years, migratory birds often have a variety of challenges that they face along the way while they're migrating, such as attract lights from tall buildings or just smashing into buildings, threats from predators, loss of habitat, exposure to pollution, and all these types of things just stop their migration or stop them in their tracks. So some species follow a pattern called murmuration. And murmuration is not unique to birds. Murmuration can be swarm behavior exhibited by insects, fish, a variety of different types of animals. Um, and so when we're talking about murmuration, we're specifically talking about the swarm behavior of a species of bird called starlings, where thousands upon thousands of starlings all migrate and flock together in an astounding sight that looks kind of like a gigantic swarm of birds together, which is what it is. So starlings are tiny birds that migrate in the winter and they're in a flock, and that's so that not only they can provide each other with warmth, but they can also exchange information as they go on their journey throughout winter migration. So you might have heard of the phrase before, birds of a feather flock together. And normally when we use this term, we're using it to describe a group of people who hang out together because they're similar. But when we're talking about birds, we're often talking about birds that are hanging out as a similar species or the same species in a large group to protect themselves from predators. So you might see a flock or an extremely large number of sparrows flying together, but you're less likely to see a sparrow, a cardinal, a crow, and a gull all flocking together. In fact, you're never gonna see that. And the reason for that is because since different species of birds have different needs, birds will often flock to the same species as themselves to protect themselves from what's the most immediate threat. But ultimately, scientists are not 100% sure about the exact mechanics behind the phenomena of starling murmuration. Like with many other facets of wildlife biology, only time and persistent documentation and research will help us unveil the mystery behind nature's greatest oddities and phenomena. With that being said, this concludes my fourth and final episode of The World of Birds. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I hope you guys learned a lot, and take care!